ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the intro. Yes! Hello, Internet! Hello, you favorite, you awesome, you amazing people out there on the interwebs and uh, anywhere in the world. I greet you. Welcome to this um, final episode of the ongoing series of the DEFCOM tutorials. But don't you worry, you might be in a party mode because, yeah, finally, we got over it. Uh, we have it behind us now. No, you have not. This is this is only this is only the last episode before the next one. It's just that there we I need some time before the next one because I'm completely out of ideas uh, what to do with you guys. So I'm currently looking for new ideas. We're currently compiling not code but a list of things that. I want to do with you next and I already have a few fancy ideas um, there's one thing I want to want to talk with you a bit more in depth though I'm not sure if we can stretch this to a whole evening so maybe we'll just put this uh, into a bucket with something else small but we're going to be using this today uh, I think are we going to be using this today yeah we might even be using it today uh, which are coroutines uh, unity has something that's called coroutines they look like multi-threading they smell like multi-threading but they are not multi-threading they are just it's it's it just looks like it's fake it's fake multi-threading so uh if you lock up your coroutine the whole game locks up but um we're gonna be i think we're gonna be using this uh, today because i got the idea of fixing a long-standing bug in our little thingy that we built there and um, I thought about huh, how I could we do the only thing I'm going to be using a coroutine. And one of the ideas I have is that um, in a future episode, I want to talk up with you guys about coroutines. What are coroutines? Why are coroutines? And how do these routines co operate, exist, or whatever with your, with your other stuff that's going on? Um, and. Um, also, in those regards, I also have the idea of um, talking uh, about actual multi-threading. Uh, because, as I just said, coroutines are not multi-threading. If uh, you put an endless loop in your coroutine, the whole game locks up, even the editor locks up. So you have um, to, to kill it from the task manager. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. Go to throat lubricant, but I got, still, I got some more coffee left. Mm. I have I have my my classic default lubricant here. It's set and ready. It's 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 ready to lubricate uh, my speech center, but uh, I still have some some very lovely coffee left. So uh, cheers to all you wonderful people out there. Mm -hmm. Well, there's there's there there's only only very few things in this world that are better than a cup of coffee. Uh, maybe a cup of whiskey, but. Ah, it's a bit too early for that. So, um, yeah, multi-threading. I want to talk with you guys about actual multi-threading. Multi-threading in uh, how do we multi-thread in Unity? How do we do multi-thread in, in, yeah, in Unreal? And a bit general stuff about multi-threading. Like, um, at, 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 the at first glance, multi-threading sounds like, wow, that's a super amazing thing because you can do amazing things with it. And on second glance, you see, oh boy, it comes with a whole another bag of problems that I didn't have before I started doing this. So yeah, that's stuff I want to be talking about and a few more things. As I said, I'm currently brainstorming ideas. So um, Parapixel, hi. A wonderful evening, morning, night, whatever it is in your time zone you're currently sitting in, a wonderful of exactly that. I'm wishing you. <laughs> Hi, nice for you to stop by. So yeah, if you have guys any 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 suggestions or wishes, if if you if you want to wish for a topic, if you say, hey, can you do a session or two or five, depending on how much there is to talk about? About oh, and I see oh, 
<laughs> I, oh boy. Oh, oh, I, I messed up. And I also see I completely messed up. Um, oh, I, ooh, I totally messed up because I haven't set the Twitch channel thingies, whatchamacallits, the titles and the categories and the tags. I totally haven't set those. Uh, let me, <laughs> um, yeah, that's on me. Uh, wait a second. Uh, I got to fix that. Yeah, it's a weird day today. It's uh, it's a weird day today. Also, I'm a bit late because uh, I don't know there was there was stuff today and uh, that delayed me a bit. So, ha. Um, wait a second. Let me let me just fix that, uh, and then I'm gonna be completing. So we call this bonus round and wrap up because who doesn't like a good wrap you know with salad and beans and and onions and all the tasty stuff yeah <laughs> okay i think i fixed that now <laughs> okay fix it sorry for that um for 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 a moment there we were streaming under the wrong category so anyways uh if you guys have any wishes if you if you're like hey uh here's a topic i would totally like to I don't know hear something about and 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 I would like if if you could do a session and show us stuff about this, please do suggest all your suggestions. Either uh, throw them here in the chat, put them down in the comments if you're watching this later on on YouTube, or join the Defcom Discord and uh, post your suggestions there. I would say the Discord uh, might be the best of all ideas. Let me just see if. Uh, Wait, we do have this social command here in chat. Yeah, look at that. Um, there should be a link in the Twitch chat right now that redirects you to the DEFCOM Discord. So if you have any uh, comments, complaints, wishes, suggestions, um, or I don't know, you have a bag of money and you have no idea where to send it, join the DEFCOM Discord state your issue and then i'll give you my address so uh, your 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 bag of gold coins will be uh, safely disposed of um i promise i will take good care of that yes <laughs> i will all righty uh with that all out of the way let's change the let's make let's not make a scene let's let's change the scene let's make me small and the other thing large so what have we done eventually like seven weeks back or something so in weeks it's actually more because i think we had two occasions where um where we didn't do a tutorial session uh one time we had two or three i'm not exactly sure uh one time we had the uh, call for change summit so uh, there wasn't a tutorial session because the summit was running and another time i just had too much of a headache. I actually did have headaches, so I, I couldn't do. So we had to cancel on short notice and say, oh, we're going to be continuing next week. Uh, not sure if there was a, a third time. So in actual weeks, it might already be nine to 10 weeks. Um, but so for the last six to seven sessions, we have been talking about general how to get started with Unity stuff. We started looking at what what did we do? What, how, how does the editor work? Um, what in the editors, what, what's the inspector, what's the console, and what's my project, and what is this, what is the asset browser, and what's the hierarchy, and this, this is, our, this is our, our, our editor window where we can edit our scene, this is our game view where the actual game takes place when we hit start, we can do this, I can just hit play. And uh, oh yeah, see it even maximizes when I start play. Um, and I can I can move around and I can shoot. And our projectiles are pretty slow because we did set them slow to be able to demonstrate something. And then we thought like, okay, this is pretty cool for for looking at stuff and trying out things to uh, to be able to to more more properly follow them. So we just kept them at that slow pace. And I think I can even look at that. I can even move backwards and forwards, so I can I can move my player really, really far to the back, um, and have all those 
those projectiles. 3D is wonderful. Isn't, isn't 3D wonderful? 3D is just a wonderful thing. Doing things in three of the Ds, um, that's that's just wonderful. So yeah, eventually we, we ended up with, with this. Uh, we first uh, started creating a few game objects like cubes and spheres, and we talked about local coordinates, world coordinates, and all that stuff. And then we started moving it around at all, and then we started moving it based on player input, and then we took a look at what prefabs are, how prefabs work, and how we uh, programmatically spawn prefabs like these these projectiles that I can shoot here. Um, that's that's a prefab. A prefab is a collection of game objects and and their properties and attached components on them and everything. And we can just spawn this collection of game objects that is that is pre-made and set up to look like something and do something. So we can just spawn them and they do their thing. And eventually we ended up with a, a little bug. Um, let me demonstrate this. Not sure if I have to restart it because I have to actually um, get in line with my enemies here. So you see the small enemies I can this I, I have little problem. It it takes a while. It it takes a while for me to destroy the little enemies. But eventually um I will I will have them properly destroyed. It it should take like four projectiles, I think. I think the, the enemies have one hundred health points and a projectile makes like twenty-five damage points or something. But you can already see with the small one, it, it just won't die. It it's just it there's I don't know. Um and I think we've never been able to actually shoot down this big enemy here, which is kind of sad. And that's a bug. And I al already, I always told you, yeah, that's because that's a timing issue. Yada 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 yada. And you know what? Why not? Let's try to fix this. Um, uh, a while back, earlier today, when I was in the shower and uh, preparing mentally for tonight here, I was thinking about, okay, how could we fix this? And first I need to fix my audio cable here. Um, I was thinking about how could we fix this and I came up with an idea. It might not be the ideal idea, I don't know, and maybe it doesn't even work, but maybe it does work. Uh, we'll see, there's only one way to find out. and. We will head down that rabbit hole and try to fix this. So uh, also, I mean, look at how these these actually disappear a bit too early. Hmm. Yeah, uh, let's try to fix this. I have no idea if my, my idea actually fixes this because I only, I only speculated about the reason for why this behavior is like this so far. I don't have concrete evidence and uh, not only no concrete, but also no steel or whatever else you build buildings with. Um, yeah, I just have a rough idea why this is the cause and um, it might be that my idea is completely wrong, which in turn means uh, even my solution won't work. But well, we're going to be trying out. This is a bonus round. We're just going to be um, looking at all this stuff we did. And um, yeah, let's try to fix this. And if it works, if we actually get this fixed, then there's still some time left. We might also just for the funsies implement a little little enemy spawner because right now we got this, this set up with the three enemies. And once they are destroyed, they are gone and the game's basically over. So let's just have enemies spawning at random and maybe even let's make them move i mean this is stuff we've we've done already so we've we've made this movement component and all that so that should be pretty easy to do or maybe just spawn maybe just have enemies spawn at random positions and if you're unlucky it's, it's it spawns directly into the player and and you're basically game over, but that's tough luck then. <laughs> yeah. um, the game terrorist. Hi there. Greetings. Go out. So, yeah, let's try to fix this issue. Uh, I think, I think it's a timing issue. What I think happening is, I mean, uh, this this big enemy is, uh, is a great example because the projectile collides with the big enemy and i think it, it should it should go away i mean the enemy has like 200 health but after i don't know like eight projectiles after we hit it like eight times it 
should be gone, but it isn't. And my theory is that this is a timing issue, that the enemy does damage to the projectile, which it definitely does, because uh, remember, we've built it this way. They, they all have the same... The projectiles and the enemy, they have our same health component, which is this one. And we have our trigger here. When, when we enter the collision trigger, uh, we check if we want to make damage to the other one. So, and oh, we could actually try. You know what? There's there's a good way to try this out. Um, if this might be the issue or not. Mm. Let's try this maybe. Um, because the the enemy the 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 enemies on trigger is called first. So the enemy does damage to the projectile by calling its inflict damage method, which is this one up here. So this inflicts the damage that the enemy does to the projectile, and of course the damage the the, the enemy the damage the enemy does a lot of um, a lot of damage. So of course the health points of our little projectile they immediately drop to something negative, which this this conditional checks like uh, are our health points zero or lower, and they are. So uh, we destroy the game object. And with this destroy call, the projectile is gone. But with the projectile gone and already being destroyed, the on trigger method can't be called anymore because the, the object's already destroyed. And with the on trigger method not being called because the object's already gone, it can't cause damage to the enemy. So this is a classic timing problem. And I have a rough idea of how we might fix this. Um, and I'm like, since we don't have an, an, an actual real topic for today, because um, this is basically wrap up and answer all the questions. So uh, unless you have lots and lots, lots of questions that we're talking about. Um, so to fill the gap between all your questions, I think why not just let's try to fix this. But first, um, I think there's a way to, to test this out. Let's check our enemy three the big one and let's not make it let's let's not make it damage to player projectiles let's remove this check mark so enemy 3 now does not cause damage to player projectiles this has another negative side effect because now the pro projectiles uh it actually has two uh it'll have two uh quite nasty side effects because if I'm right, the enemy will be gone with only one projectile and the projectile will keep going. It, even if the enemy, enemy wouldn't it be destroyed, the projectile would go through the enemy uh, back the other, other side and keep flying. Um, so the projectile will keep flying and it... Okay, for some reason doesn't even... Okay. So we might have another problem with the... Oh, wait, did I maybe just forget to tag it properly? <laughs> okay, yeah, I did. Okay, uh, we have two problems here. <laughs> yeah, we have two problems. Um, we have our timing issue that I think we definitely have. But with the big enemy, we have another problem. As you can see, uh, even with the enemy not causing any damage to the projectile anymore, uh, the projectile... It doesn't destroy the enemy because, um, and uh, it's yeah, kind of embarrassing that I didn't notice this for the last two sessions. But let's check our code. Let's check our on trigger on trigger enter. This is this is the one that this is the method that's 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 been called uh, when the collision takes place. And you see, we are checking if the thing we are we are collided with. Uh, if that's an enemy and we want to damage enemies or if it's a player we want to um, uh, yada 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 so our projectiles are set up they want to damage enemies and we're checking if we hit an enemy and we want to deal damage to enemies and only if that's the case or one of the other two conditions here uh, then we actually call the inflict damage to, to cause damage to the other one um, and we're checking if we are uh, collided with an enemy 
or player or pro player projectile uh, querying for the tag of the other game object. Because remember, we can tag um, objects like we have the player down here, which we have tagged as the player, or we have our enemies that we have tagged as enemy. So we can then query for the tag and uh, based on the tag, we know the kind of, of the other one. Like, okay, that's a player, uh, that's an enemy or that's a player projectile. Um, and if we look at this enemy three, it's uh, untagged. It, uh, it hasn't been tagged at all. So uh, let's change this. Let's tag this as an enemy and start this. So now we should be doing damage to the enemy. And maybe since, oh yeah, since this is, uh, since it is on, on trigger enter, we actually do only cause uh, damage once. Because on M, uh, on 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 trigger enters only called when the collision starts. Uh, remember, we have multiple functions. We have um, on on trigger. What was it? Trigger stay or or trigger continue? What was it? Let's let's see. We have uh, uh, we have on trigger. Okay, the on trigger on trigger start. We already have. we have on trigger stay. Uh, this is called every frame for as long as the collision still takes place. So while our projectile is in, kind of inside the enemy and, and, and keeping flying, um, this will be called on trigger exit will be called when the collision is done. So basically when our projectile leaves the enemy again and is in open space again, um, then we get the, uh, the, the on trigger exit called so this is why we're still only doing damage once because on trigger enters only triggered once per uh, per collision event <clears throat> and not all the time but yeah now it works uh now that the enemy doesn't do uh any damage to the projectile anymore but we can we can re-enable this so our projectiles properly go away but we might still need a few more uh, because we still have this 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 weird timing issue uh, I would need to check the numbers let me see uh, the small enemies have 100 health points and our player projectile does 50 damage so it should take two projectiles to kill one of the smaller enemies and I think sometimes it, it needs more, like one and two. Yeah, see, and it's still not gone. Based on, 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 on the mathematics, if that thing has 100 health points and um, we're dealing 50 per hit, this should be gone after, after two hits. And now we are, holy cow, we need a lot of... We need a lot of hits to kill this thing off. So I think this is the timing issue. Um, what I what I just described that the enemy deals his damage to the projectile, which which causes the projectile to be destroyed before it has the chance to deal the damage to the enemy. And I think we're going to be fixing this. Unfortunately, I have to leave you alone for a minute or two. So don't run away. I'll be I'll be right back and when I'm back, we'll start trying to fix this issue given my theory that it's uh, a timing issue is right. So don't run away. Um I'll be back in just a handful very very few minutes and um uh, yeah, I, I'll leave you I'll leave you with this lovely music uh to raise the suspense. Uh See you in a bit.
Alrighty, see that was quick. And here we are again. So uh, let's try to fix this. Let's try to fix this. So, so um, again, the problem is that um, the enemy deals so much damage to our projectile that our projectile gets destroyed before the on-trigger enter can be called. So um, one way, uh, yeah, one way to uh, to prevent this is to have the, the the game object in this case the projectile. I mean, this 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 um, goes for any game object. We have our health component on, so um, to have it to be destroyed the next frame, and not right now. And while being under the shower and thinking about how to fix this thing, I had another idea what we need to do. But since on trigger enter is only called once. Uh, we don't have to take care about this because um, we, we do not need to worry that in the next frame, while the projectile is still not destroyed because it's only destroyed in the next frame, but before it's destroyed, um, maybe on trigger enter is called, so it deals double damage. Uh, but this isn't the case because on trigger enter is only called once. We've just tried this out. So this is only called once the the, uh, the collision actually starts. So uh, we do not have to deal with an issue that uh, maybe there's another timing issue that the projectile deals double damage. I don't think we have to care about this, but one thing we do have to take care about, and this is very, very important, is to say hi to Lakeside in the chat. Hi there, greetings. Wait a sec, I got the perfect emote. Where is he? Here, there is. Uh, there's, there's our favorite, our favorite. No. Oh wait, no, that's not the one. Wait, wait, wait. I, I, I can't delete. Can I, can I delete my own messages in chat? Because I was, uh, I meant this one. I meant the other emote. Well, the first one is is cool as well. I mean, that's the yeah, nice. Um, but I actually meant the other, the other emote there. Cheers. This is the pre lubricant before it goes to the actual lubricant. So, um, so our, our one way to fix this is to not destroy the game object right now, but have the game object to be destroyed in the next frame. So that if stuff needs to happen on the game object, this frame, this stuff can still happen. So how do we do this? Um, I think destroy has a second parameter. Uh, unfortunately, it's not. Let's me let let's let's see. Uh, but we can't use the second parameter. Um, at least I don't want to because. Um, so we can give destroy a second parameter. We can give destroy uh, a float, which is the time. Um, Remus object come on an asset. Oh, uh, let's let's see. Can I? Why can't I? Why can't? How how can I select the second the second overload there? Uh, anyways, uh, what what we could do is uh, we could say destroy game object one. So this means destroy this object after one second. We could also say destroy it after 0.1 seconds, which would be 100 milliseconds. So we can give it a time. We can give destroy an optional parameter um, that uh, causes the, the actual destroy action only to happen after this time. Not right now, but in this case, like in 0.1 seconds. It's also not what I want because this 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 is um, it's it's not accurate enough because I want to destroy this thing the next frame just not this frame I just want it to be destroyed in the next frame so what I thought what we could do is we we, we could use something uh, what if our FPS is too high yeah see exactly that's another problem uh, that's another problem if if we if we give this a time. Um, 
you have no idea how many frames this is because on, on higher frame rates there's way more frames or on slower frame rates it might completely mess stuff up you of what you could do but this is still not precise enough you could still say yeah yeah yeah, yeah i'm using the delta time because delta time is the time between frames well yes and no the delta time is the time between this and the previous frame but there's no guarantee that the time will be the same for the next frame it might be faster because for this frame we took a long time uh, it might be longer because we now have to do a lot of stuff so this this is also for this case this is this is not the way to go uh, but we could use something that um, I've, I've said this in the opening wait it is you know my my chaos uh, we can use something that I want to talk about with you in a bit more depth in an upcoming episode uh, when we start another series of the tutorials um, and that's a coroutine so um, we're not going to be bothering uh, too much with what coroutines are and how exactly the work uh, they work and, and all this stuff uh, because Again, this is something I want to cover in in detail in in the future in the future session. Um, so for now, we just we just use one and we call this destroy destroy object, right? And the first thing this does, no, the, actually the second thing this does is calling the actual destroy on our game object so basically uh doing the very so so what i what i basically did is i moved so we can re remove this from here i moved the destroy call from inside our inflict damage um into a separate function destroy object ignore this i enumerator for a second just for t today, don't bother. Don't bother with. Just ignore this for today. We'll talk about this later. Um, so instead of calling the undestroy in inflict damage directly when our health is too low, um, I put the destroy call in a separate function that I called destroy object. And for now, it does the very same thing. It just destroys our game object. But since this is going to be used as a coroutine, and again, we'll be talking about coroutines in detail in a future session, um, I can do another very, very neat thing. I can say yield return null. Just long story short, what this does is it exits this method. Um, it stops execution of this method right here why i want to unmark this um it, it it stops execution of this method right here and returns back to the system so the rest of the game can keep running because remember we're just on one thread if 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 we make like an endless loop everything locks up and nothing runs anymore so this returns like like you would expect from a normal return so at, at first, at the very first um, moment, this acts like a normal return. It jumps out of this method and returns control to wherever it came from so the game can keep running. But in the next frame, when the next frame is, is being rendered and processed, execution of, <clears throat> execution of this method will continue. And now comes the really, really exciting part. It will continue after the return call. So uh, let's say I have uh, instruction one, I have instruction two, I have my yield return null, I have instruction three, and I have instruction four. So the long story short, what this does is when this method is called, Instruction one is executed, instruction two is executed, and then the method is being, being exited, return uh, control is returned to wherever it came from, uh, the game can continue. And on the next frame, 
this method is reinvoked, but it continues. It doesn't restart from the beginning. It continues where it left off. So in the next frame, instruction three will be executed and then instruction four and so forth until you either tell it to wait or to halt execution till the next frame or the method is eventually done and doesn't need to do anything more. Since we don't have these instructions, all this thing does is when I call this method now, uh, it will immediately exit out and return control to wherever it came from. So the game can continue doing its things and hopefully call you on trigger enter. And in the next frame, the command after the yield return will be executed, which is our destroy call, which will then finally destroy our game object. I hope this makes at least a bit sense. And if it doesn't, if you say like, whoa, whoa, how, what, why? Again, this will be a complete and separate session. Um, this is something I want to talk about with you in more detail and exactly ex explain what coroutines are, what they are not, and how they work and what other neat things you can do except just giving it null here. So all we have to do for now is we have to call this destroy object method. Um, and we just, for, for this to work, for the yield return thing to work um, and, and execution in the next frame continuing on the next, uh, on the next instruction, we can't just call it like any other function. Uh, we can't just do uh, destroy object. This will not work. Um, but we have to wrap this. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now let's 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 do this completely different. Uh, what we have to do is we have to call a special method of Unity of the engine uh, that's called start coroutine. Uh, and we give the start coroutine. You see, it has the red squiggly lines here because start coroutine expects something as a parameter. And what it expects is our coroutine that we want to start. And that is our destroy object method. So this is long story, very, very short. This is how you start a coroutine. Um, you tell Unity, look, I want to start one. And then you give it the call um, that you actually want to to be executed. So what happens now is when our damage is zero or below, instead of just calling uh, the, um, the destroy method of our object, we start our coroutine that eventually will destroy the object. And all the coroutine does is it first just exits out and tells the system, come back at the next frame and then the next frame um, our object is destroyed. So if two things evaluate to true now, if first my assumption that we have a timing problem is right, and secondly, I actually implemented this properly and how it's supposed to be, uh, then this should, or, or okay, let's, let's add a third condition to this. If I didn't forget anything, uh, this should fix our problem. So if we, if we start the, our game again and I go to this little, um, there should now be two projectiles should be enough to properly destroy it. And it still doesn't work. Look at that. <laughs> and it still does not, now it doesn't destroy it at all anymore. Okay, um, maybe I need to debug this more. Hmm. Uh, let's see, maybe we need to wait two frames. I have no idea. Maybe it's only starting it on the next frame. Let's try this one. Or maybe I forgot to save. So one and two. Okay, we seem to have another problem there. <laughs> the next frame will not call it. Yeah, I, I do think it's called the next frame, but we, we seem to have another issue there uh, because it just uh, called once when it enters. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's automatically being called again. This is the magic of this yield return thing. Um, I only call it once when I start my coroutine. 
Uh, but it's it, it it automatically this is the magic that happens behind the scenes. It it continues automatically with the next instruction on the next frame uh, when I yield return null. So when I call this, uh, it just returns, and on the next frame it continues, uh, and eventually should destroy the game object. So uh, why are we not causing enough damage? Hmm. Um, this is, so, I don't know, either uh, I got something completely wrong or we have a different problem. I, I did not forget to save, right? Let me try to save again uh, and maybe verify the numbers. So, uh, two projectiles, uh, no dice, three, four, okay. Maybe the numbers are set to four. I don't know, let's see. So this enemy has 100 health points. Okay. And our player projectile deals 50. Hmm. Very strange indeed. So it should take two, right? You know what? Let's let's do something else. Uh, in our health components, let's just for debug purpose, just for debug purpose, let's add another serialized field, and we call this uh, private string uh, name. Uh, let's just call this name. Uh, by default, it's empty. And then when, when we get damage inflicted, we make a, a debug log, log, not logger, just log, thank you. And we say name just got hit for uh, damage damage so um, so object name just got hit for this amount of damage and then we could make another debug log here that tells us Uh, health gone, going, uh, going to die. All right. The problem is that we don't get the, the debug logs frame perfect. I'm um, thinking if it makes sense to maybe put one in here. Uh, uh, you know what? Let's make one here. Let's let's see how that turns out. Um, destroying object for name soon. And right here we say destroying object for name now. So let's see how, let's see how that turns out. So we're not gonna maximize on play. Uh, we still, because I want to see the, the logs down there. And then we go down here. So, and we should be seeing two of those entries each. We should be seeing one uh, for the enemy that has been damaged by the projectile, and we should be seeing the projectile that has been damaged by the enemy. So let's shoot, and let's see what we're seeing here. Uh, I maximize this, and I also grab the old magnifier, 
So, just got hit. Wow, 4,000. Who the. What the. Okay, wait. What? Why? No, what? Just got hit for 1,000 damage. Uh. Why so much? I mean, okay, still, it's it's gonna be destroyed, but it's gonna be destroyed next frame. Um, oh, and we didn't set any names. Okay, wait, ha, wait. Um, this this doesn't work properly yet because we have to set the names. Still set the, exactly. I still need to set the names. Uh, yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, so let's do this. So this is enemy one. This is enemy three, because I misclicked. So now let's make enemy two. And this is our player. And this is our player projectile. And since that's a name, I also will write projectile with a capital P, because that's just the last name. Hello, my name's projectile, player projectile. You know, it's like Bond. My name's stirred, not shaken, or something like that. Uh, but still, a thousand. What the, how the, and why the... Oh, yeah, oh, damage dealt a thousand. Okay, st okay. Because the enemies deal it, oh, when, when, you, when, you cr when you crash into the enemy, the enemy deals a thousand. Okay. Uh, not a thousand miles, but a thousand points. Dilly, 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 a thousand points. I will... Deal your damage. We could make a song out of this, but unfortunately, Twitch Sings isn't a thing anymore. That's kind of sad, because I totally cannot sing, uh, but I enjoy doing Twitch Sings every now and then quite a bit. And I think I even enjoyed it more because I can't sing. Yes, um... This, uh, this this could be a thing to sing. Okay, now we got our names, uh, I think. Yeah. Uh, let's try this again. Oh, wait. This was... I want to... No! Okay, this one's missing. Okay, I want this... I want this to be in a controlled environment. Um, so, gonna be shooting once. And checking out all our logs. Let's see. Player projectile with a missing space in my debug message. Just got hit for a thousand damage. That's correct. Health gun. Going to die. That's correct. Um, destroying object for player projectile soon. That is correct. And my cables are still not so super correct. That is something that will never change. Uh, we can sing sometimes uh, with the the what the the who the what now. Um, or be an as we can play the background bass. Yeah, once um, uh, once once Corona is over, uh, we'll we'll so we'll we'll, we'll so doing this. Uh, we'll be invading we'll be invading the Defcom headquarter, um, and and we'll be singing all night long. Oh yeah, and it'll be great. So, uh, for some weird reason, the player projectile just get got hit again for a south, south, south thousand damages. Why? Why that? And why doesn't why doesn't the enemy get hit? Health gun going to die. Yes, destroying object soon. Wonderful. Oh, look at that! Look at that. Enemy two just got hit for fifty damage. Lovely. Uh, destroying object for player projectile now. Okay, I get two nows because for whatever reason it got hit twice. I have no idea why that is. That is weird. That should not happen. Um, because we only fired one projectile. So player projectile just got hit for a thousand damage. Yeah, but... Why why two times? That is weird. Is there a second collision maybe? I didn't I didn't catch. Let's oh we're gonna, gonna see. 
Um, so, but the important thing is, look at this. Enemy 2 just got hit for 50 damage. So, and uh, then, only after that one, the player projectile is going to be destroyed. Wonderful. So, uh, let's clear this lock. And now, you know what? Let's let's do another thing. Uh, let's do another thing. Um, let's stop this for a second. First of all, let's introduce the missing space right here. And then let's do, uh, just got hit for damage and we already oh okay we already decreased this is good so uh i can say hp left is uh our health points there they are so we now even know if uh, if it properly subtracted everything so fire this up grab the old magnifier already so move here shoot once and let's check the log so uh, again player projectile just got hit for thousand damage and now it has minus 900 yeah that makes sense okay uh health gun going to die destroying player projector soon again it gets hit a second time i have no idea why that is and uh, going to die destroying here enemy two just got hit for 50 damage hp left is 50 which is correct um, destroying object for player projectile now. Interestingly enough, we only get one destroying player proje uh, uh, projectile now. Even though we should get two, because we got two of these just got hit. Uh, and just before we did get... This is weird, you know, this, this, is, this is the weird stuff um, you have to deal with. So let's, let's try... Okay, let's clear the lock so we know what happens when we shoot again. So let's let's demaximize this and shoot once more. So let's see what happened now. So hey, Shino, greetings. So the player projectile, of course, got hit, and now it is at my <coughs> excuse me now minus nine hundred. Uh, going. To die, destroying soon, and destroying now. See, and we are missing. And this is weird. This is the part I'm not understanding. Um, we are missing the trigger enter. Okay, let's uh, let's 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 make more debug locks. Uh, we are missing the enemy getting damage from our projectiles. So let's let's not only let's not only lock when you get damage dealt. Let's also lock when you do deal damage. So in our on trigger enter. We also have the other one. Uh, yeah, we don't need that. Uh, eh, we have the the if. Let's let's put it into this if block, and let's say debug log name just hit nine. Just collided with some thing. So, because maybe, maybe this, maybe this inflict damage call doesn't work for some, like, super weird reason. And also, just for completeness sake, uh, let's, let's say when we don't have a health component, let's make a debug log warn. 
I'm not expecting to see this. Uh, but maybe, uh, again, maybe we have a completely different problem and maybe maybe this get component call doesn't always work. So, um, health component missing on the other one. And three exclamation marks because importance, you know? Importance is important because otherwise it wouldn't be important. So clear the log, play the game. See, and this is actually this this is this is your daily life, not only as a game developer, but also as a as a software engineer. Uh, debug those weird bugs or issues that you just can't explain because you have no idea what the heck is happening. So we shoot. Bam! We look at the log. So enemy two just collided with something. That is right. Player projectile got hit for a thousand damage. That is right. Uh, health is gone, going to die. Destroying object for player projectile soon. Destroying object for player projectile now. And nothing happens. Okay. We still don't know if the on trigger maybe just hasn't been called. It, it's it's going to be called on both objects, right? It's not only called on one. No, because sometimes it works. Um, the the one time the first previously thingy it worked. Both got the. But for some reason, huh? Huh? This is this is I don't know. It's not called. I'm both in the same frame. Yeah, that that could be, but I I wouldn't understand why. Uh, that could totally be the issue. Uh, games terrorist. Um, that could totally be the issue. That it's it's not gonna be it's it's not called on the same frame for both. Or at least sometimes, because um, the 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 first shot in the previous attempt. It did get called for both on the same frame. Well, not sure if it, it was the same frame, but it did get called because I I, I I did shoot and I got both messages. But weirdly enough, I also remember I also got, and now I only have this once, but uh, remember that I also got the player projectile just got hit two times. And only one time for the other one. Maybe Unity is trying to uh, to be clever and keep the FPS high by doing it in different frames. Yeah, and that's a problem. Game engines or software in general trying to be clever, um, trying to be the keyword here because usually they fail at being clever. Um, but that that actually that that could be. That that's a problem, all right. That is so. But for, for, let's let's try something else. Uh, let's uh, maybe because there's uh, another another possibility. Maybe the on trigger did work, but for whatever reason, our condition up here uh, didn't evaluate for whatever reasons I don't know it couldn't because that tag should always be set and damaged enemies also always been set but uh, let's try uh, so name okay you know what let's let's put this just collided with something up here um and then just collided with something of interest. So now we have two messages when we collide at all. And if this condition evaluates, we collided with something of interest. Uh, and we can actually say 
Um, no, uh, we can say just collided with a, and we just say, uh, wait, other, right? Okay, uh, other, no, not to string, tag. Uh, other tag to string. Bum. Oh, the to string is even redone that I don't need this. Okay, cool. So I, I don't know, I thought there came a tag object or something. Yeah, but maybe maybe it's calling to string uh, auto automatically. So we know that we collided at all. And then we know we collided with something uh, that actually interests us. We didn't get the log warning. I Actually, I did not expect this to see, but uh, let's see what happens now. Let's see if we maybe get this, but not this, or if we don't get both. If we don't get both, we are back to the idea of uh, Unity maybe not calling this uh, for, for both at the same time for some totally weird and esoteric reason the collision happens later for the for the projectile than it happens for, which is weird because it's it's two sphere colliders and when they collide they collide. I mean, how can object A collide with object B, while object B hasn't yet collided with object I? It just doesn't make sense. But well, this this is uh, how it works. So. Player projectile just collided with something. Yeah, with the player. <laughs> it collided with the player. Um, player projectile collided with something. But why did it collide with the player? We only have the cube down here. Oh, this is weird. Um... So enemy two collided with something, great. Enemy two collided with a player project. Oh wait, oh yeah, just something. Okay. Um, yeah, no, wait, uh, we change this. We actually do, um, since we, we, ha we always have the tag, uh, we, 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 uh, we debug log us out with what we're colliding always. Um, so we always know with, with what we're coll collided. Um, and then we go back to just collide it with something we want to deal damage to. So first we know that we collided and maybe with what. Um, and then we see if we actually want to deal some damage based on this collision, uh, based on on this condition up there. So, let's try this once again. This is interesting. Um, I'm only afraid that maybe we're not getting a solution till this, uh, this day's over, which would be kind of sad, but oh well. So, uh, Mr. Worf, fire at will. No, no, wait! Not Commander Riker! Jesus! Just, you know? Whoa! That's no, okay, we're gonna shoot. So, um... Player projectile just collided with untacked. Oh, okay, maybe maybe for whatever reason this, 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 this capsule up here still triggers uh, a collision. Fine. So, uh, we again trigger uh, collide with something untacked, which is, like, super weird, because on trigger enter should only be called once. So enemy two collided with a player projectile. Correct. Enemy two just collided with um, something we want to deal damage to. Correct. Then we do deal the damage. Health gun going to die. Uh, destroying object for player projectile soon. And this is weird. Then we have enemy two collided with a player projectile again. Remember, I only fired once. I only fired once. Um, but we still get another collision with, with enemy two with a player projectile and enemy two just blah, 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 blah. Uh, destroying for player projectile soon. Oh, look at that. And here we actually got enemy two just got hit for 50 damage 
HP left because a player projector collided with a enemy. Uh, should have been an enemy, but come on, I'm not going to put grammat gra grammatical grammatical checks in there now. This is just a debug message. Um, so player projector club is something we want to do damage to and just got hit for 50 points. But maybe only on the second frame. Um, is there is there something like a frame counter? Can we check in, in which frame this is? Wait, is, is there something like a frame counter? Unity frame counter so that we actually know in, in, in the in the how maniest frame we are an accurate FPS counter for Unity. Now I don't want an FPS counter, I just want to count the frames, you know. I don't want I don't I don't want FPS. I don't want it. Global frame here, yeah, global frame counter. Yeah. So frame count larger zero. Frame count minus my what? <sighs> la, 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 la. I want to do a reframation update. Okay, yeah, you know what? We just built one. Okay, let's let's just build a simple frame counter. Um the thing is, what I don't want to do is, um, um, thinking how to build this because I do not want to use something I do not want to use. I do not want to show you something I think you should never use. So. Mm. Because I would actually, I would like a global. I would like, I would like a global frame counter, but that would need to be accessible from. Any, okay, you know what? Uh, we just give everything their own. This is just this this. This is just a, a demo project. Very very easy. We just um, every object has their own frame counter. I'm not gonna be building a global frame counter because then I would come up with an idea how to make this accessible to every single object without using a static, without using a, a, a static field or a static property, uh, because um, I, li I like my sanity, so I don't use statics. So we just say uh, private int frames alive, uh, which just counts the frames this object has been alive. So we can see if this is in this frame or in the next frame. Um, so we need the start method to initialize frames alive with zero. And then we're gonna be doing the update thingy to just increment this. And then down here, inflict damage, we can say, uh, no, not on inflict or in inflict them. The problem is, I'm not sure if that helps us too much. Because I, I wanna I wanna know if 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 those two things happen at the same time. Um I don't I'm not sure if this actually helps us because if those two events happen, I want to know if they happen on the same frame. And I can only know that now I I need I need a global. I I need I need I need a global frame counter. Uh, just thinking about how to make this available to... Um, look at that, we have the score manager. Oh, look at that, we always have a reference to the score manager, right? Uh, our movement component. We also have a reference... No, in the movement, yeah, we don't need it in the movement component because that thing doesn't. You know what? Okay, we, we sneak this into the into the score manager. Um, we're going to be sneaking this in here. We say uh, we say private int frames 
then we already have a start and we set frames to zero. Uh, and then we're going to be doing an update and we're going to be setting frames one more, increment this. And then we're going to be making a public and get frame counter that ah come on now this is or should we okay uh i i let you decide we're going to be making we're just going to be making a a a, a simple method or we're going to be making a, a proper proper getter for this Ah, come on. Let's 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 make a proper getter for this. I mean, in the end, this is C sharp, so why not use uh, cool C sharp stuff? So public int frame counter. Do it quick and dirty. Yeah, both are quick, and the whole thing is dirty anyways. So, <laughs> so not much lost. So, uh, and we want get this, and this uh, returns frames. Wonderful. Jonathan Frames. Okie dokie. Uh, and we're incrementing. So at least we have um, a similar same number for, for when everything happens. And we already have a reference to our score manager. <clears throat> so we can say inflict damage. We just got hit for damage on frame. Oh wait, no, no. Uh, we hit got for damage, damage on frame. Uh, score manager frame counter. Wonderful. Don't forget the spaces, so our messages look nice. And also when we have the on trigger enter, we just collided with a whatever on frame score manager frame counter. There's another thing. There's there's one 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 very beautiful thing we might have used for this, um, but this would have overcomplicated it. And it, it actually is something I um, I have noted down on my list of edition of of new topics for a new series of tutorials. Uh, we could have used a scriptable scriptable object because scriptable objects are pretty nice. They are neat. You can do nice things with them. And uh, what's that? What are you saying? Uh, score manager does not contain the definition for frame counter and no accessible extent. What? Accepting a first argument of what? Come again? I mean, we just implemented this. Why are you yelling at me? There it is. It exists. Why can't I access this? Please tell me. Score manager does not contain the definition for frame counter and no accessible extension. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, maybe because I, uh, okay. Maybe because I need to call, because the names have to match. Oh, uh, don't tell me the names have to match. Oh, that'd be ugly. Don't tell me the names have to match. Come on, finish compiling. Yeah, the names have to match. Okay, um, so the, here's another here's another um, another way for you to decide if to use uh, your own method or if to use um, C sharp getter and setters. If you use C sharp style getters and setters, the name of your property has to match the name of your field which sucks. 
So uh, maybe you do want to use um, an own method. But anyways, uh, it seems to work now. So we can run this. Run, baby, run. And see what happens. So let's shoot at this enemy again. Bam. So let's see. Show me what you got. Player projectile just collided with Untacked on frame 477. All right, then player projectile collided with Untacked on frame 546. That is a lot of frames later, so almost a second or something. Um, and then enemy two. Now, now we now we're getting into the interesting stuff. Enemy two. Enemy 2 just collided with a player projectile on frame 546. Oh, look at that. Oh, 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 this is interesting. Look at that. Player projectile just collided with an untacked on frame 546. But on the very same frame... On the very same frame, the enemy too collides with our player projectile on frame 546. So, this untagged up here could be our enemy that we are not dealing damage to because for some reason we're not getting the proper attack, which I, uh, why I, I don't understand that. Because it happens on the same frame. On the same frame, our player projectile gets a collision with something it doesn't know. And our enemy gets a collision with a player projectile. That that explains something. So it does happen on the same frame. They both get the collision event on the same frame. But for some reason, we have yet to find out our projectile doesn't get the proper tag. That is interesting. Enemy 2 just collided with something we want to deal damage to. Yada, yada, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, things start to make sense. So, maybe we don't have... Well, maybe we still have a timing issue, but not the one I thought. Um, oh, hey! Little Crywolf! Hello to Germany! From Germany, by the way. Hello from Germany! to Germany. <laughs> Hi there, greetings. Uh, if you're in Germany, I know it's evening where you are. So a wonderful evening. Uh, cheers. Always keep the throat lubricated or you need to, uh, to make ugly. <laughs> so, okay, things start making sense. Our projectile does collide, it gets um, the, the the collision event properly and, and stuff but for some reason it kind of hits the wrong object uh, so which is it it's enemy 2 right it's this one let me see yeah it's that one It's we're dealing with enemy 2 so let's zoom into this guy oh boy why can't I okay let's do it like so Oh. No. Yes. Maybe. Wait. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, I think I see our problem. Do you see it as well? Do, do you see our problem? Because I think I see our problem. Because look at that. Um, hey, Dominic, greetings. A wonderful evening to you. Nice for you to lurk in or stop by or chat with me. Or I don't know, whatever you're about to do. <laughs> Hi. Um, okay. 
The problem is the flaps. Well, I called them like I have no idea if that's a proper name, but I called them flaps. You know, these these little side thingies here that actually make our enemies look like UFOs. Um. Remember, I added them. I'm not sure. I think they 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 started their life as a capsule, and I just I I squished it down. Uh, because the the old collision mesh looks like looks like that. So, um, I squished that down. You see here, scale x.3, y.7, and z1. So I I squished that thing down. But for some reason, uh, the collision area did not scale with it. Because if I disable, you see the green, this green stuff here, this is the collision. This is our collision area. When I select an object, you can see the object has this orange um, highlight thingy. Hey, Astrid! Kokox! Greets, greets you! I, I greets you! I, I raise my glass to you! Hi! <laughs> We're currently trying to figure out why stuff didn't work for the last three weeks or something. And I think we're, we're, we're so close, so close to the solution. Um, but you, because look at that. Uh, if when I select an object, you see, it has this, this orange outline to show me what the object is. And it has this green outline. The green outline is our collision. The orange outline is our object, the 3d object. And the green one is our collision. And you can see there is this, this huge green thingy um, surrounding everything and when I disable the flaps, when I remove the flaps for a second you can see I have the orange outline here which is my sphere and I also have this green outlines that perfectly match the sphere because that's the collision for the sphere. So uh, now I re-enable my flaps and you can immediately see this huge green outline appearing because remember I, I squished the flaps down. Let me, let me copy this one so I don't um, destroy the nice one. Uh, so let's put this all back to one. So this is this is the original size of this flaps object. This is a capsule and you can see, I hope you can see it in the stream, you can see those, those green lines. Um, that uh, that 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 uh, symbolized the collision area, and then I scaled it down. How did I scale it down? Uh, point three on the X, like so, and you can see I'm scaling down my object, but the collision area doesn't change. Uh, the the collision area still say stays this 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 big chunk of something. So what happens is when our projectile hits the enemy, these two collision areas have a fight with which one our projectile collides first. Because this, this green sphere pretty much has the same extensions like, the, like this one. Or, well, this one's actually a bit larger. So, so there's a good chance our projectile actually hitting the collision area of our flaps and the collision area of our flaps is completely wrong because well you see it's 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 just too big and i'm checking if i can scale the collider i, I can edit or i can edit a collider and then i can just scale it down can't i can I set trend? No, this uh, that's the transforms of the object, right? Yeah, that's the transforms of the object. We don't want to change these. Um, I can edit the collider, but that's work. I don't want to work. I'm lazy. I I don't ha want to have to to squish it in the editor with the scale tool and everything. I would like to be able to type in numbers here. Um, we can define a center and oh because the, ah because the capture collider just has a radius 
And we can make that smaller. But then yeah, and that that doesn't that doesn't work as well. That pretty much does not or does it? Nah. Not really, huh? Can you just disable the collision of the flaps object? Yes, I can, and this is actually my plan B. It's it's a uh, uh, game terrorist. It's it's like you've read my mind, um, because absolutely, um, and I think this is what we're going to do, um, because everything else would result in work, and I'm lazy. I don't want to work. Um, so yeah, you you can. I mean, you can you can. If if this would be okay, if this would be a production project, if this would be something you actually made trying to make a game with, you would go into Edit Collider and or or maybe you have a custom collision mesh anyways. So for now, just to get stuff working, I think we're just gonna be uh, we actually just gonna be disabling the collider. So first, let me reset everything I changed. Uh, which totally does not work. Lovely. Um, oh wait, here's there's a height. Yeah, still doesn't work. Still doesn't do what I wanted to do. Okay, this is. Yeah, it's it still totally does not do what I wanted to do. Okie dokie. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we go into our enemy prefab right here and I double click on it to go into prefab edit mode and then I select my flaps and I just disable the capture collider. Bam. Done. And this one's also properly disabled. Wonderful. Just wonderful. Yeah, the reset still doesn't work. So, uh, this one also should not have... Why can't I see my... This is weird. Why I can't see the colliders here? Oh, because... Yeah, because I'm stupid. Because it's this one that's that's selected. Um, so, we still see the outline, but it's, it's dimmer because it's disabled. Wonderful. And our enemy 3, same thing. Great. Ladies and gentlemen... Dear friends, I think we fixed it. So, um, you just witnessed a journey from an idea, what might have been the cause, down to it was something completely different, but with good old debug log debugging. Uh, um, and I, I like to call it echo debugging because uh, in, in some program languages, uh, echo is the command which with which you just print out stuff. Um, yeah, so with uh, good old log message debugging, we kind of found out what the problem is. But let's try. Let's let's not celebrate. Um, let's not celebrate the day before the evening. Is a German saying that we like to say. And let's make this big again, and then let's move over here, and let's see. Uh, one projectile, two projectiles, and the enemy's probably gone. Um, so, uh, so here, one projectile, two projectiles, and the enemy's gone. And this one should last for four projectiles. So if we did everything right, <coughs> if it really works now, when I shoot four times, this thing should be gone. A one. A two, a three, a four. And it's gone. I got 450 points and I'm feeling like super. <laughs> uh, we found it out. We finally fixed it. Uh, ain't this great? This, this, this is great, isn't it? This is, this is cool. Um, this bug has been with us for, I think, three sessions or something. And we finally figured it out. And not only did we figure it out, we also fixed it. And now we got 450 points. So the only thing that we need now is 
more points. Right? Yeah. Um... Hmm. Thinking about what I'm gonna, I'm, I'm thinking about maybe. I mean, this is this is our big enemy. Can I can I say can I tell it it's a big enemy? How do we do that? Um. Oh, you know what? <laughs> you know what we're gonna do? We make this like asteroids. Um. The first the first idea I had like come on let's let's just um. Uh, because we have still some time left, we don't we don't have to end this right now. We still have some time left. So if you have any questions, if you if if there's anything you want to ask, now would be the time. Um, but if you don't have any questions, I would I would fill the remaining time we have. I thought like we make an enemy spawner, uh, like we write we we have done prefabs, we have done spawning of prefabs. So my idea was um, to just have some more. Uh, to, to have a small script that randomly spawns enemies, but I'm just having a quite neater idea. Uh, let's make it a bit like asteroids. Let's give the let's give our our health component here. Uh, let's have it when the object is destroyed. Let's have it spawn optionally, not always. But let's give it the ability uh, to spawn uh, two offsprings. So when you destroy it, instead of the enemy just be gone, you just got two smaller ones, just like in asteroids. Um, let's make this, this is fun. I like this. I like the idea. So, uh, and since none of you complained so far, let's just do this. So we make a private bool. How do we call them? <laughs> Hyd Hydra approves. <laughs> hey, Hydra. <laughs> Ooh. Um, unfortunately, there's 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 no place where I could watch Agents of Shield. Um, I would love to continue watching. I, I think I've seen the first two seasons. Um, but it's it's nowhere available where I can watch it. It's it's so sad. Um, just one second. Uh, just gotta gotta sneeze my nose, and I don't have a scene where just the camera is this. Okay, um, this one will be very very quick. I'll be I'll be back in seconds. I just gotta gotta sneeze my nose quickly. Um, yeah, uh, I'll be back in a few seconds. So don't run away, and then we'll we'll make this offspring thing. Okay, and back away. Oh no! Oh, wait, wait, wait. Ah! My, oh boy, everything's falling down. I just wanted to pull the volume up, and instead, everything started falling down. Uh, okay. And while falling down, that thing got thinned, and oh boy. Ah! 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 Yeah, uh, that's what happens when uh, when you have everything set up on a temporary home office, working from home setup. Uh, it's improvised and just temporary. So uh, pushing the buttons too much on the mixer makes the mixer fall down. So, but I, I fixed that. Um, I was a fixer for the mixer. So uh, let's continue this. We make a bool and how do we, how, um, how would we want to, children, offspring, let's call this offsprings. A spawn offsprings. That's a cool name, isn't it? And by default, this is false. And of course, that's a serialized field because we want to set this from the inspector spawn of springs with one F maybe no it's still wrong why do you think I have a typing mistake in offsprings let's ask Google how that's properly written and T 
2F was completely right. So I have no idea why my IDE complains about a typing mistake because yes, my IDE even complains when I have spelling mistakes. Uh, last time you heard Offspring was <laughs> Rock am Ring 2000. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, let's let's give it at that. That's cool. Maybe maybe we got some music with that then. Uh, and then before we we can do this just before the destroyer. I think we can even re reduce this to 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 one. We can just leave this. So um. The question is, um, I can't get the size of the object, right? Um, mm, hmm. You know what? We make this quick and dirty. We we just make this quick and dirty. Um, and we make a another private and that's a flotation value and this is offspring spot no actually offset actually actually let's make this let's make this a vector three Um, because then we can actually give it an X, Y, and 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 Z, and by default that's oh wait by default uh, that's a vector three zero, and maybe a scale, maybe to make it really really interesting, give it a scale or something. But that again would be work because we we would have uh, we would have then to set all the things and I don't want to set all the things. But there's one thing we need and uh, we need the prefab uh, offset pre because that thing need profab yeah uh, because that thing needs to know what it's supposed to be spawning right. Alrighty. So the, 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 the. so before we we make this we make this into a proper into a proper method because you know always keep stuff uh, by itself. Don't put too much stuff into one method since this one is supposed to just destroy our object. We are not putting the spawning in in there, but we instead we make a. Yeah, I actually do want to make a spawn of springs, but I don't want to make this a getter or setter. I just want to make a private method, a private thingy spawn spawn of springs. Yes, but that's not. I'm sorry, C sharp. That's not a getter and setter thingy. This is just a normal method. And what we're gonna be doing is. Oh wait. Um, the problem is the offset the offset is only for for we only have one um, okay you know what let's make this an integer that's by default zero um, and then this is oh I can't make ah uh, I can't make this in uh, I can't make this an array I could make this wait I could make this a dictionary maybe uh, why can't I make this an array I'm pretty sure I can make this. Oh yeah, of course I can make this in array. Uh, just the, in the 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 initialization is crap. Um, and then we also don't we don't need this at all 
because we can see if this thing has more than z more than zero we can we can check for this thing uh if it has more than zero um entries offset entries where we want an offspring to be um to be to be to be spawned and the game theorist has to go again alrighty thanks for thanks for um i'm stopping by thanks for checking in and um have a wonderful weekend and see you around bye bye yeah because we can just see if this if this is greater than zero so we do have offsets to spawn um or we don't even have to we can just make this uh, we can just make for each loop of this um yeah we can just for each through this oh this is getting easier and easier you're more I yeah I, the more i think about this the easier yet more flexible it becomes wonderful so let's just say uh for each and this is a vector three in mm. offset and also this this is supposed to be called offset z since this is an array where oh what did i just do i think hit the wrong button on my mouse and now it's mousing really fast uh so this is offset z since this is an array with multiple offsets it's plural uh why are you complaining variable designation yeah i oh because i i still need uh we just call this spawn spawn offset exactly thank you this is a lovely ide it always knows what i want to do oh this is so lovely um why is this public pool this is public void thank you um so we just for each through all the offsets and what we do is we instead of gi given that we do have let's let's do some error checking here uh let's see if we have an offspring prefab so if that's not now let's do some proper proper um error checking and let's even say uh debug log warning um we were supposed we were supposed to spawn offsprings but pre blah i can't type today but prefab wasn't set exclamation mark because you lazy programmer you can't even spell offsprings properly offspring g g z. yeah um id still complains but i think it's um type properly so uh, what we do is we instantiate our offspring prefab because that's stuff we've already done this is stuff we've already covered so i don't think i need to explain this if i do need to explain this please just let me know then i will explain a bit more but this is stuff we've already done like i don't know four sessions ago when we look i don't know four or five sessions ago we looked at prefabs um and this is all we do we just spawn the offset prefab um also we need uh we have a game object this is the offspring of spring like so um essentiate yes and then oh and we need of course we need to save the reference because we want to do something with it because we want to say offspring transform position equals um the spawn offset and that's it that's basically all we need to do uh we loop through all the offsets we have and for each offset we have we spawn another instance of the prefab that we've put in and then we position it 
Uh, but this is, wait, is this local or world position? This is the world space position. Uh, but we need the, oh, this is an offset to, oh, okay. Um, uh, no, wait, this is, I can just save this in a vector three uh, own position. And this is our transform position. And we just, because this is the, remember we also, I think it was in the in the second or first or second um, session of this Unity series, we talked about world positions and local positions. And this is the world position. Um, we can actually, we can check this in our movement component where, where we are firing. Uh, where we set, um, see where we set the the position of our spawn player projectile, uh, basically to the position of the player, and then just added a bit to it, because this position of the transform is the the position in the scene. This this is the absolute position in the scene. So, uh, but this is this. We only have an offset, which is relative to the position of the current object that's gonna, gonna be destroyed. So all we have to do is, uh, and the order doesn't matter because this is. Um, uh, it's uh, ask your math teacher why the order doesn't matter. Uh, but we can say our own position, and we just add the offset onto it, and then. Uh, the position is relative to our count that we so we instantiate that thing we set it to where we want it and everything's good and neat so before destroying the game object we actually call spawn offsprings and then we destroy our object wonderful and i think that's it i think that's it let's try uh, let's go back to the to the to the to the large enemy. This one, uh, this one here, and offsprings uh, spawn offsets. Right there, there are none. So let's say this thing's fairly big. This spawns two. This spawns two other thingies, and it just spawns an enemy. So we just drag our enemy prefab we drag this here into our game object or prefab reference uh just like we did before and then we just want to want to offset it on the x-axis uh let's say the first one by one the second one by negative one and let's see how that goes maximize on play play and let's see how that plays out so um one two three bang 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 and now the fourth shot should destroy this enemy and it also should spawn two more. <laughs> and it did. And now I can shoot these ones. Or I can't. Why can't I? Maybe they are not properly tagged. Or maybe they Let's 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 check their actual position. Maybe they're maybe they're they're misaligned or something. Maybe do I do I even hit them? Yeah, I'm hitting them. See the the projector. Yeah, it goes. See, it goes it goes straight through the middle of that enemy. Uh, but maybe maybe the enemies maybe they are just not properly tagged. Let me see. This is the thing, and it's not tagged. Yes, correct. It's it's not properly tagged, and we do have errors. Null reference exception. What? Oh, because we we need to set the. I think we need to set the reference to to. I, I think we. No, wait. Uh Wait, I'm getting a null point. Uh, oh, score me because we need to set the score manager, right? We need score manager. We we need to set the score manager reference. Yeah, yeah, need to do that. Um. 
Yeah, but they are not tagged. Why Why are they... Can I stop this? Thank you. Uh, why they are not tagged? Uh, let's check our prefab, our enemy prefab. And yeah, uh, because in the prefab, we are not setting it. So let's set the enemy tag on our prefab. So now all spawned instances of our enemy are supposed to be properly tagged with enemy. Cool. And we need to set the reference to the score manager for the health component. Um, wait, I'm setting, what? No, score, yeah, we need to set the score manager reference um, to the, to the, uh, into the health component. Do we have, yeah, because we have it. Of course, we, we, we have it. And if we have it, we can, we can pass it on. So, uh, also what we need to do is we say offspring get component, health component, and then we set the score manager reference to our own score manager reference, which is that one. And that should get rid of the null pointer exception. Let's try. Let's check this out. Check this out. <laughs> Play. So one, two, three. Drum roll. Four. Now we get those guys. Uh, now when I shoot them. They properly disappear and I get so many points. Oh, this is, oh, this is a lovely, oh, this is, oh, I like this, uh, this is uh, so uh, lovely. Ah, I like it. That's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it, oh yeah. See, now we can even make it asteroids style. So uh, let's make this a bit more interesting. Let's move those two guys a bit more to like, I don't know, what happens when I move him to minus seven and he's then at seven and the enemy three thing, we move this to, I don't know, minus three, 2.5 maybe. Yeah, that looks nice. Um, and then we just copy this guy and call it enemy four. And since we copied it, it should inherit everything uh, of the other stuff. So this is enemy four. Um, also, our freshly spawned enemies don't have a name. So we just call this random enemy. And maybe I even learn how to properly type, maybe not in this lifetime. Uh, my Jesus Christ. E -ni -mu. How hard can it be to just type enemy? Um, so our enemy four, uh, cool. Uh, but we have to move him to 2.5. And this is all the bit, you know what? We just set the camera, where's our camera? Um, how does it look? Does it does it look straight? No, it looks a bit down, right? Okay, so uh, let's rotate the camera a bit so it looks a bit more uppish. Um, oh, I even can set the rotation to yeah zeros maybe nah tennis tennis okay. Um, you know what? Let me make this enemy four. Let me make this into a prefab. Would you like to create a prefab? I would uh, uh, create. Uh, would you like to create a new original prefab or a variety? No, I would like to create an original prefab, and we call this. We call this big enemy. So 
the default name is random big enemy so uh in the prefab we already have said that we want to spawn two small enemies and we have have the 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 the, the thingy set everything cool so we can copy paste this enemy four and name this enemy five because i think you might already have an idea of what i am going to do uh we're going to be moving this a bit more up to like i don't know six seven oh yeah and then we scale this even more up like oh, that's huge that's huge let's make him so let's make him like that uh the offsets are negative two and two and here comes the reason why i made this big enemy prefab because that and oh, also he spawns three haha <laughs> wait a second he spawns three of those guys um and the third one is uh two up i hope they don't clip into each other maybe we have to change these values but let's see uh but he's spawning a big enemy so this huge guy now is supposed to spawn two of the big guys and the big guy spawn uh, three sorry the huge guy is supposed to spawn three of the big guys the big guys spawn two of the little guys and the little guys they just they are just gone when they're gone uh so save this and see if everything works so uh let's get rid of the of those two one two three four i mean it's a bit boring because they don't shoot back but we could add this one two three four so he's gone <laughs> and now let's let's shoot the big guy up there Oh, we might have. Okay, now the collision still somewhat works. Okay, um, see, we have three of the big guys. Four there. A few projectiles there. Four here, and we already have twelve hundred fifty points. I mean, look at that! Look at the points! So many points, and now we have lots and lots of the small guys because we just shot so many of the big ones that there's so many of the small ones left see this is starting to become a game i think we should put this on steam don't you think ah uh, maybe not maybe need it needs some more polishing um but well you get the point uh exactly 2700 points so let's restart this so see the game starts with two smalls two bigs and one huge one so let's get rid of the of the small ones first uh point to shoot yeah um one two three four okay there was only three here's the fourth one uh one two three four and in good old asteroids fashion uh when the big ones go away they leave smaller ones one two three four why why ever that that huge one has just as as little health points as the big ones one two three four tick 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 boink see and you can barely see them but they're there and this actually starts to become interesting i mean it's not like super interesting at the moment because they don't shoot back they don't move they don't do nothing um i don't know maybe you're interested in actually doing maybe, maybe we should do a little asteroids clone where um these things actually fly around uh and and they shoot back and stuff i don't know if you want to see this um if you if you want to have a tutorial series where we kind of build an asteroids clone uh just a little one like this let me know if that is something you would like to see if 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 we know that you want to see that we're going to be showing you uh but for as long as i don't know that you want it well how can i 
And well, how can I know when I don't know? And see, we also got 2,700 points. I think that's a seven. Um, so yeah, um, the, the huge one should actually give more points. Um, but that is fine tuning then. You can you can always set this. Um, I mean, those those are values you can just set in the inspector. You can just set the, the huge one to like, I don't know, 500 points or something. Um, but yeah, so let's... Let's see how the how our player model vanishes into the background, back into nothingness. And this is basically me riding in the sunset and saying goodbye to you. But um, don't be sad or happy, depending on what you actually are, uh, because we are going to be meeting again. Yes, just not next week, not the week after. It will be a few weeks, maybe months. I don't know. But uh, we'll see each other again in the next series of the DEFCOM tutorials because this concludes the second series of the DEFCOM tutorials. Um, I had a great time. I hope you had as well. Thanks for being here with me and spending your valuable time with me. And um, yeah, I'll be collecting a few more ideas and topics that I might be talking, I might be, be talking about you in the next series and then see you in season three, right? Till then, have a good one, take care and see you around. Um, again, hit me up on Twitter if you want uh, or join the, the, the DEFCOM, uh, the DEFCOM Discord. If you want to talk about coding stuff, if uh, you want to ask questions or, I don't know, just have a nice idle chat uh, with a cup of coffee, that's the places where we can meet. Take care. So long and see you around.